him, K-I-M, True Blood, T-R-U-E-B-L-O-O-D, and I'm Marathon County Clerk. Okay. Okay. So basically, for this election, we're faced with a little bit different situation than with most elections, where we have the special election for um, the 7th Congressional District to replace Congressman Duffy, who retired in September. What happens when a congressman retires in the middle of a term is the governor calls a special election to replace that person and the governor is in complete control of the timing of the election. However, there are some things that come into play regarding federal law that the governor has to follow and we all know that that didn't happen the first time around so then we were faced with a situation where we had to reschedule that. Thankfully, it was able to get synced up a little bit with the existing um, elections that we did have scheduled for February. So the 7th Congressional primary will be held on February 18th along with our regular um, primary for other offices that we have. One thing that federal law dictates is that ballots for federal elections, of which of course the 7th Congressional District is a federal election, have to go out to absentee voters 47 days prior to an election. That 47-day deadline was January 2nd. For local elections, candidates had until January 7th to submit their paperwork to even get on the ballot. So of course, those deadlines didn't match up. So the Wisconsin Election Commission came up with this solution and they called it Ballot A and Ballot B. Ballot A has been sent out to anyone who had a valid absentee ballot request on file as of January 1st. So they got the ballot A and the only election on ballot A is the 7th Congressional District election. That is the election to replace Tom Tiffany. There are four names on the ballot. Two Democrats, Trisha Zunker and Lawrence Dale. And two Republicans, Tom Tiffany and Jason Church. So there's a lot of confusion and like I told you guys ahead of time, it took our office a little bit of time to get our heads wrapped around this whole thing too, as to what happens with those ballots because now we have our full ballot at the printer and we'll be distributing those to our municipal clerks next week. They'll go back to their offices and they will send an absentee ballot, the full absentee ballot to all of their voters who have um, absentee ballot requests on file. So we have a situation where voters have two ballots in their hands. Ballot A has just the 7th Congressional District election on it. Ballot B has the 7th Congressional District on it, plus the state Supreme Court election primary, plus any municipal races that there might be. Primaries four. In the uh, Marathon County, there are only two of those situations, and that is in uh, Aldermanic District 10 in the city of Wausau. And then anyone who lives in the Edgar School District has a referendum on the February 18th ballot as well. So what's going to happen with ballot A and ballot B? Voters have two ballots in their hands. We have given our municipal clerks and municipal clerks are clerks in the towns, villages and cities in Marathon County. Um, we have given them a suggestion, a strong suggestion to send out a note with all those ballots and we did provide that for them explaining to the voters that they did get to they are going to be getting two ballots and they have a couple of different options and those outline those options are outlined here when they get those ballots they can vote ballot a and return it to their clerk when they get ballot b they can vote ballot b and return it to their clerk or they can ignore ballot A and only vote ballot B and return it to their clerk. When the clerk sends out an absentee ballot, they mark on the envelope in a red pen whether it was ballot A or ballot B. So then when they get those ballots back, they know which ballot it is. We are going to ask our clerks to take all of their ballot A's and put them in a separate envelope keep them totally separate from any other ballots. And then they take those ballots to the polling place and we're asking them to do that um, on election night. Typically a clerk will take all absentee ballots they've received to the polling place during the day and poll workers will process those ballots as time allows during the day. Those A ballots that come back cannot be counted until after the polls close on election night. 
When a voter comes into the polling place, as you all are aware, you state your name, the poll worker finds your name in the poll book, you are given a voter number and you sign the poll book. When an absentee ballot comes in, the poll worker finds that person's name in the poll book, puts a red A, and assigns them a voter number. So at eight o'clock on election night, they'll pull out those ballot Bs, they'll see that person's name, look in the poll book, John Smith, A125. They returned a ballot B, the full ballot. That ballot A will go in an envelope to be rejected, called rejected absentee ballots. They pull out John Smith, go to the poll book. John Smith, there's nothing written next to their name. Poll worker will process that ballot A and that vote will be counted. So people are not getting two votes. If they don't return the B ballot, the full ballot, um, ballot A will be counted. If they do return the full ballot, ballot A will not be counted, it will be rejected. Does that give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on with this? How many people have been calling in? Lots, lots. That's kind of why I thought we need to get some information out there to people. Um, my deputy clerk took a phone call from an elderly lady the other day saying, my friends are getting ballot A there's only the one race on there, what's going on? So there's a lot of confusion out there and I don't think it's been real clearly explained um, on a state level so that people really understand what's going on. This will happen again in April with presidential preference primary due to the federal election. Our election is on February 18th for the primary. We have to have that ballot A for presidential preference out to the clerks the next day, February 19th. So obviously there's not enough time to certify the primary election, get ballots printed and everything to get it out. So it's going to happen again in April. So the more information we can get out to people, hopefully we can alleviate some of the confusion and some of the rumors that are going to start flying that people are voting twice in an election. And so with these people who are calling confused, um, what do you say to them on the phone? What is the summed up kind of version the easiest way to explain it? It's not a real easy explanation to give. We are trying to walk them through the process um, as simply and easily as we can. That no, you're not voting twice. You will be getting a full ballot. There are instructions with all the ballots that go out to everyone. Hopefully people are reading and understanding those very simple. Um, basically, these are your three options. Vote ballot A and return it vote ballot B and return it, or wait until you get just ballot B and return that one. So most people that we're talking to are understanding after we talk to them, but I know people aren't always going to call if they have a question. So hopefully it'll be easier for them to just pick up the city pages or turn on the radio or you know listen to a report on the TV. They'll know, they'll know what to do. Do so, you characterize it as like dozens or hundreds of people calling? Or um, dozens, dozens, dozens at this yeah. point. Mm -hmm. And are you recommending people just wait till ballot B to make it easy? Or yes, okay. that is what would make it easier on everyone. That will alleviate confusion for the poll workers on election day, dealing with those uh, ballot A's. There will be fewer of them to deal with. Um, we are hoping people will just kind of ignore a ballot A and wait to get ballot B, those will hit the mail next week. That's what I was going to ask, is that they are coming at different times. And right. If they get ballot A first, you know, don't be alarmed. Right. Ballot B is coming. And we put, okay. we asked clerks to print up their um, enclosure on brightly colored paper so that it would catch people's attention right away and they would read that, say, hey, okay, there's another ballot coming. Maybe I should wait for the full thing. So that's what we're hoping people do. Um, so we'll see. Is this a Wisconsin issue or is this across the United States? This is a Wisconsin issue. It's a seventh congressional district issue. Okay. So all of the there, has, there have to be other designations in Congress. Yeah. Right, and I can't speak to how other states handle those. Yeah. Um, federal law is going to be the same as far as scheduling scheduling a uh, ballot to go out 47 days before an election 
that's the same no matter what state you're living in. Um, different states have their primary elections scheduled at different points before general elections. You know, as Iowa, New Hampshire, they have early primaries. Um, whereas you have some other states that aren't going to have a primary till later on in the summer. So. Kind of depends on each state. It's it is. Time. Yeah. This is this situation for this election is unique for um, the seventh congressional district, of which Marathon County is one of twenty. So there are 19 other of my fellow county clerks who are dealing with the same issue. And so if um, people are looking for more information outside of what we have all provided for them, can they go to a website or someplace yes. that has all of this typed we will, out? Yes, we will have all this information posted on our website. If you just Google Marathon County, that's the easiest way to get there. Go to the county clerk's page. Um, you can also go to www myvotewi.gov anything you want to know about elections in the state of Wisconsin is there as well okay. so a pretty unique situation it is it hasn't happened no before here. one of my uh, deputies has been in the office for 26 years and to the best of her knowledge this has never happened before do you think this will be something that kind of sticks or do you think it'll change again if this something like this happens Hopefully the Wisconsin Election Commission has found a process that works. Of course, there's no process that's perfect, um, but I think once everyone gets a handle on this process, it will work. Um, so hopefully if this were to ever come up again, we'd stick with the tried and true and not try to come up with something else. But that remains to be seen. Okay, that answers all of my questions. Did you have any other questions, Brian? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, unless there was anything Peter? else that you wanted to add. No, just please do not let this situation deter you from exercising your, vote, your right to vote. Um, this is, you know, a very important part of our uh, democracy, and we hope everyone gets to the polls and exercises their right to vote, even those who are not able to go to the polls on Election Day. Don't let this deter you from contacting your municipal clerk and requesting an absentee ballot. Um, they can certainly answer any questions that you have as well if you contact those. And all of the uh, contact information for your municipal clerk is located on our website as well. When did that, that rule, 47 days, like what year was that? That's a good question. I don't know right off the top of my head. Easy, I'd have to look it up. And I did verify yesterday that the 47 days was correct, just to make sure that I had that number that was correct in my head, but I don't know when that. It's under the uniform, it's UOCAVA Uniform Absentee and Overseas Citizens Voting Act. Um, right off the top of my head, I don't know what year that was. So everyone's kind of learning together throughout right. this whole process exactly. right now. Exactly, okay. exactly. There's been, the state has put out lots of education for clerks. We've had lots of conversations and webinars and, you know, back and forth trying to work out all the kinks. So hopefully we have it straight in our minds, just we want to communicate to the voters so they can get it straight in their minds as well. And this, I guess, is nothing that anyone can request something different or change. This is how it is. This kind of is how it board. is, right. Okay. This is how it is. Gotcha. Exactly.